Hello and welcome to Floyd's first live webcast. I'm Haley Walker. We're excited to be able to use emerging technology to communicate with you about your health. August is National Breastfeeding Awareness Month, so we thought it fitting to use our first webcast to discuss the benefits of breastfeeding for both new moms and newborns. Joining us for our discussion today are Floyd Dictation Consultants, Sue Lewis and Pat Wynn. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Haley. Good to nice see you. Here. Yes. So let's start with an obvious question. Um, let's talk about the benefits of breastfeeding to both mom and baby. Well, there are many. Really, when we talk about benefits to breastfeeding, that makes it sound like there are two logical choices. And really, breastfeeding should be the way all babies are fed. What would be more apt would be what are the disadvantages of formula feeding? Breastfeeding is the way babies are supposed to be fed. Breastfed babies, breast milk has been studied for many years now. We've always known intuitively, moms have known that breast milk is best for babies, but now the studies are showing that breastfed babies are healthier. They have less ear infections, less tummy upsets. They actually have higher IQs as they get in school. And now we also know that breastfeeding is also good for moms because moms have, who have breastfed for six months or over are less likely to have um, diseases as they get older like breast cancer, um, uterine cancer, and also, oddly enough, osteoporosis. So all those are benefits that come to moms from breastfeeding. So the benefits are not just for the baby. And recent studies have actually shown that moms who breastfeed are less likely to have cardiovascular disease in older, as they get older. So there's just not much about formula that can even compare to what the benefits that come to moms and babies from breastfeeding. That's fantastic. It's just the way it should be. That's the way Mother Nature mm -hmm. intended it. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about some of the um, some of the things that new moms are most concerned about when they're expecting or after they've just delivered and they want to breastfeed, but maybe they have some um, some concerns. What do you often encounter with new moms? Well, sometimes they're concerned that they won't produce enough. So much so that they'll say, well, I want to do both, just because they're scared that they may not produce enough. But their body nurtured that baby for nine months, and if they give their babies a chance, then their breasts will nurture them for the time that they need to be at breast, which is up to a year or longer. And so our job is to encourage them to give a chance, to get that magic hour, to uh, be there as their support. Let's talk about that magic hour. Tell us a little bit about what that is and why that's important to breastfeeding moms. Well, for over 30 years, skin to skin has been researched. We know that babies go through nine stages after birth before they're actually ready to attach and breastfeed. And it's so critical that they get that. It will um, stabilize their blood sugars. Breasts will heat a baby up two degrees and cool them down a degree if they're too hot. Um, and then there's the bonding. Moms just are flooded whether the baby is actually attached to the breast or not with hormones that come from their brain that say immediately, let's make milk for this baby. So very often during this time, they're just getting acquainted. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing for mom to do but just lay there and look into her baby's eyes. They're very alert during that, those two hours after birth. And we know that if the baby self-attaches while mom lays there and holds the baby, that breastfeeding will go well normally from then on. Mm -hmm. So it's a critical time for mom, baby, and dad to actually get to know that newborn and just let things occur naturally. Very nice. And it's, it's not only, as she said, it's not only for mom and baby, it's for dad too. And one very important function that dad has before mom comes into labor mm -hmm. is to explain to the family, you know, until the baby's an hour old, 
we're going to have that time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. The baby was not born to be wrapped up and, and held by other people. Mm -hmm. The baby's made to be skin to skin with mom and dad right there so that family can bond. And let the family wait until after that hour to come and see the baby. And I know grandmamas are just really anxious to see that new baby, but that first magic hour will really get that new family bonded and off mm -hmm. to the best start mm -hmm. that they can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very special time. Yes, yes. yes. So tell us, as lactation consultants, what you do to support new moms and new babies and new dads in getting started with breastfeeding because um, it doesn't necessarily, it's a very natural thing, but I don't know that it necessarily comes naturally to everyone. So how are you um, helping to get, get people off to the right start when they're in that, that, those first few minutes and hours? Well, Haley, you know, at one point when breastfeeding was the norm, uh, a new mother had been breastfed herself and probably had seen her mom, her aunts, mm -hmm. and her sisters breastfeeding babies. Mm -hmm. So it was natural for them. But our new moms now, a lot of them didn't have those influences. They had never seen a baby being breastfed. Mm -hmm. So the main role for a lactation consultant is just sort of to mother the mother and help her do what really does come naturally if you'll just let it without the other influences of other people and people who are not familiar with breastfeeding and folks who just really want to know, how do I know how much that baby's getting? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know, but we know that your baby's getting enough. So we're there to offer practical information, turn your baby mm -hmm. this way, turn the baby to your stomach, hold the baby like this, hold the baby straight. But we're also there to say, you're doing a great yes. job. Look how beautifully you're holding your baby. Look at your baby looking at you. Your baby loves you. Mm -hmm. And that those two components are equally important when you're dealing with new mamas. Yes, the mm -hmm. encouragement and the emotional yes. support is very important. And so um, expand on that a little bit as, um, as you know, time goes on. I know that um, once moms have ba the baby in the hospital and you're there to help support that very first time, um, we also have an outpatient clinic where you all are continue to assist um, mm -hmm. with that encouragement and emotional support as well as the the more technical. We're there in the afternoons, Monday through Friday. Um, I have taken a few emergencies on Saturday uh, because often intervening is the difference between a mom continuing to breastfeed and her deciding to go to formula or to just pump. And so uh, all of our moms, especially with the event affordable care, are able to come now. It's not an out-of-pocket expense. And Floyd has been a leader in that from the beginning, even when um, insurance was not meeting that need. Uh, so what we do is we'll see patients after discharge in the afternoon. We'll support them. We'll give them a plan to succeed. Um, sometimes if they've had a difficult time, we can intervene at that time. Mm -hmm. And they will continue on. And so we're there for them as long as they need us. We have uh, clients who have brought their toddlers to the center, 15, 16 month old toddlers, who suddenly have decided to have some sort of little problem mm -hmm. or need some advice. Mm -hmm. and we're happy to see all breastfeeding moms. It doesn't matter whether they deliver at Floyd or not. We, we serve a wide area mm -hmm. where there are not a lot of outpatient breastfeeding centers in the area. So we're happy to see any breastfeeding mom of with babies of any age. Mm -hmm. We're happy to see whoever needs us. That's great. Mm -hmm. And Pat, how, how many moms are breastfeeding today? And what percentage of new moms would you say do make the decision and, and I breastfeed? I think that our initiation rate is around 74, 75 percent. Um, and um, we are at a good point for Georgia. 
um, in the future we're hoping to join the Five Star Program which is a state program and will be a new distinction for Floyd. Um, we're, we're headed toward baby friendly steps and Floyd has many of those in place now. So Floyd's always been a leader in mother-child health and we're, we want to stay there. We want to provide the best care possible for our moms. That's fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about common uh, misconceptions about breastfeeding, myths that may be out there. I know that you hear about breastfeeding quite a lot in the media, um, especially you know when moms breastfeed in public, or um, mm -hmm. you know there's there's just a lot of um, a lot of opinions and myths and and things out there about breastfeeding. What are the most common things that you would um, hope to dispel? Um, by educating people about breastfeeding? Well, many moms will say, well, my mom didn't have enough milk, so I don't think I'm going to either. Women who have carried a baby and delivered a baby, unless they have some medical issues, have enough milk for their baby. But it's the early introduction of formula that causes a mom not to have enough. So being afraid they're not going to have enough milk, then they want to give their baby formula, which sort of is a self-fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. because that will cut down the amount of milk they have. So in actuality, they just need to trust their body mm -hmm. and their body will, will give the baby what they need. It's when we start trying to second guess Mother Nature mm -hmm. that we get into problems and that's a myth we hear quite frequently. I need to give both because mm -hmm. my baby might not get enough. So that's mm -hmm. a big one. And in actuality, the more you nurse, the more, the you, more you produce. The that's more right. milk that is removed, the, the more you produce. Demand. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so do you find that um, expectant new moms are afraid that breastfeeding will hurt? Sometimes, yes, but that magic hour kind of dispels that because uh, what the steps that happen during that time actually uh, give uh, familiarization to the mom. Um, they're in a more relaxed state, and if they self-attach, I seldom have moms that say it hurts. So we we'll work with moms if there are any problems, but mostly moms are pleasantly surprised that it really doesn't hurt most of the time. But for expected moms, yes, sometimes they are mm -hmm. afraid it's going to mm -hmm. hurt. Mm -hmm. And then we have grandmamas who say, well, it's supposed to hurt. If it doesn't hurt, the baby's not getting enough milk. Oh no, that's so wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And moms find that out for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so do you find that um, that um, new moms worry not only about having enough milk, but how long will I nurse? How will I know if the baby needs to nurse or wants to nurse other than obvious signs like crying? Do you find that, that you all have to educate often on those topics? We attempt to get them to look at their baby, not look at the clock. Uh, normal feeding cues for a newborn uh, can be smacking, sticking the tongue out, uh, putting their hand in their mouth, rooting around, bobbing up and down on their chest as they hold them. Um, so we get them to look at those early cues and just remind them that the, to, do, to look, cert, get to know their baby and their ba own baby's particular cues. And then they have time before the baby's overly hungry or thirsty to get the baby into position and to go ahead and latch their baby. So it's very important that they not ignore those cues. And that's what they're doing in the first two days is just uh, learning about their baby mm -hmm. and experiencing what it's like to breastfeed. Daddies are very concerned a lot of times about how do I know how much the baby's getting? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't know exactly how much, but you can tell if your baby's getting enough. And that's what matters, mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. okay, I know my baby took half an ounce. Well, how do you know half an ounce is enough? So it doesn't, amounts don't matter. You look at your baby, my baby's resting well, my baby's having wet diapers, my baby is happy. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to look at. Okay. Mm -hmm.
But daddies are very, they like to write down amounts. Most mm -hmm. daddies just are concerned about amounts and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter about amounts. Yeah, and so um, growth spurts are um, a normal part of nursing and mm -hmm. I think sometimes new moms get worried when the baby starts to enter a growth spurt because it changes a little bit. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that? Well actually cluster feeding or growth spurts are very common in the first six weeks of life because the baby has reached a certain point in, in development before they're born and now they're going to grow rapidly because they're outside. And so basically if mom knows that the baby is going to maybe tell them that they're hungry uh, maybe one, two, three, four times in a row and if they know just to go ahead and put the baby to breast that it's that this is a normal function of breastfeeding and that this is how the baby is growing and that sure you're going to have enough milk mm -hmm. so uh, and then they'll know that if this is behavior is happening it's a normal part of, the, of infant development and they won't worry that they're short of milk and so we do try to tell them that yes you're more than likely going to see this and it can be any time during the day mm -hmm. even though it might be evening or sometime during the night because babies really don't have a a circadian rhythm. They can't tell night from day and they don't begin to develop that until they're about three weeks old. And so we encourage moms to rest and some tell me they can't. But I'll say, well, maybe you can get some extra rest in the early wee hours of the morning when you're extra sleepy. Sometime during the day they need a little extra rest to do the nighttime feeds. Mm -hmm. But nighttime feeds are important because during the night that's when you're prolactin, that hormone that says let's make more milk is the highest and they just kind of ride along on a surfing board so they really need to, to take those things into consideration that it's important to get rest mm -hmm. to know that frequency feeds are going to happen I think they have a rough idea but every baby's growth is a little bit different than mm -hmm. the other so should breastfed babies be fed on a schedule or on demand? What do you recommend? On demand. When the baby says he's hungry, that baby's the boss because he will regulate your milk supply. So, so important not to put on a schedule. You'll be on the baby's schedule in about six weeks and you'll know, oh yes, uh, this is usually when they wake up, this is usually when they're going to feed. And it, it gradually builds on itself. Mm -hmm. So, no, for the best outcome, the best milk supply, no schedules in the beginning. Great. And so the body does know because um, um, something sort of magical happens when a mother hears mm -hmm. her baby cry. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit? I have actually known a mom who said that uh, she had left her baby three, four months old and had left a bottle in case the baby woke up, but planned to be home before the baby woke up. The baby, say, was due to eat at four. Well, at three o'clock, suddenly she noticed that her breasts were leaking. And she thought, well, that's odd because it's not time. But when she got home to get the baby, she found that the baby had woken up at the time that her breasts were leaking even though they were widely separated. Now, not all moms notice that, mm -hmm. but your breast and your baby get on a schedule, your mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. and when your baby's ready to eat, your breast will tell you it's time to feed yes. the baby. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't happen in the first couple of weeks, but it will happen. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely does. So let's talk just a little bit about some issues that um, new mothers may encounter with breastfeeding. Um, you want to address some of the most common things that you see and not so much the will I have enough um, but some physical issues mm -hmm. that could that could present. Well many moms who um, are doing well breastfeeding the first few days at the time the mature milk comes in which all moms have colostrum at first and that's all the baby needs that's a perfect milk for a newborn mm -hmm. then when the baby's roughly about three days old the mature milk starts to come in it's a bigger volume because your baby's ready now to for a bigger volume and it's a slightly different composition to help your baby grow but during that time sometimes the changes in the breast make it difficult for a baby to take the breast 
properly. There's some problems with latch on and we get calls from moms who are just really full and and don't know how to, what to do. Mm -hmm. So what we usually tell them to do is warm packs and maybe express out a little of the milk, soften that breast and put the baby in and just remember this too will pass. There's always mm -hmm. or most women have a little bit of swelling in addition to the milk and and the discomfort that comes at that time seems at that moment to the mom sometimes to be overwhelming. It's, a, it's an emotional response as well as a physical response. But it's handled and there are ways that we can help moms so they just need to call us or come into the center and after we pass that, that's a rite of passage. Mm -hmm. After you can get past that and the milks in and that baby's nursing, generally speaking, that really, after that, you're ready to settle down and nurse your baby. Mm -hmm. It goes very smoothly after that. It's just a little road up. Mm -hmm. And most things can be overcome in nursing. Yes. One um, thing that I wanted to get you all to address is um, working moms. Can working moms successfully continue to breastfeed after they go back to work? Yes, they can. <laughs> And how do you encourage new moms to do that? What are some, some of the tricks of the trade to help moms? Well, the law in the state of Georgia says that a mom has a right to breastfeed anywhere she has a right to be. And the laws also say that employers must provide a clean place, not a, not a restroom, mm -hmm. for a mom to pump mm -hmm. and must provide her time. It doesn't have to be paid time. What I recommend that moms do is a couple of weeks before they go back to work, go ahead and bring the baby into our center and weigh the baby and then nurse the baby and weigh the baby again. That tells us about how much the baby's mm -hmm. getting a feed and that way she'll kind of know how much to put in the bottles and she's going to want to start to pump depending on how old the baby is when she goes back to work, but a couple of weeks at least before she goes back to work to have some, some stashed away. And she needs to um, have a good pump. And we can help her if she wants to say to, to come into the center. We can help her knowing what her schedule will be, how much her baby takes. Then we can help her set up a schedule for mm -hmm. pumping. Okay. And do you also help with breast pumps? Can moms get breast pumps through the center? Yes. Private insurance covers most uh, breast pumps now. Um, our office manager, Jennifer, can field calls and tell the, the, the uh, mom if uh, it's covered usually. Um, but also she can contact her insurance company and be sure that we can provide the pump to her. For our other moms, we do provide, if we believe there's going to be um, a necessity for a pump, like returning to work, there are some programs from the government that now provide pumps. So not everyone will be, get a pump before discharge, but most can, and that's something new. And we generally recommend if you're returning to work that you introduce a bottle at three weeks and begin to learn to pump and we can give some tips on how to manage that. And so yes, we have um, a Medela boutique in our outpatient center, and we offer many, many breastfeeding supplies there. Okay. Very good. I wanna jump back to the beginning. Can preemies breastfeed? Talk to us about tiny, tiny babies in, in the neonatal intensive care unit and what you're doing to support breastfeeding there. We have a great uh, NICU, neonatal intensive care unit at Floyd, and we have two pound babies there sometimes, and usually a baby that small will, will have a breathing tube and that kind of thing. But just as soon as we can, we start doing kangaroo care with those babies. We get those babies up against mom, mm -hmm. and then as they get a little bit bigger, they're going to just naturally start to move to the breast and nuzzle and so we're going to help them get down to the breast and it's just a natural process as they get a little older and that suck reflex develops then they just naturally go to the breast. We have great success 
with even our tiny preemies. And we have had babies discharged from our NICU having never had anything by mouth except their mother's own milk. Mm -hmm. And that's something that NICU has had a, a big commitment to. And we also, for our tiniest babies, moms don't pump a lot of milk at first because the first milk, the colostrum, just doesn't come out well. Mm -hmm. For those tiny babies, we actually have breast milk that has been donated. We get it through, through a, through a, a milk, milk bank. bank. Mm -hmm. pasteurized, tested, mm -hmm. safe for the babies, and that's what they get instead of the formula. Because breastfed tiny babies are less likely to have many complications, the most of which is something that happens inside their intestine where a section of the intestine actually dies. It's a bad thing. And breastfed babies don't generally get that. So we feel that breast milk is absolutely the best for our babies and until mom can provide us with her own breast milk, we provide that breast milk. It's, I tell moms that we can buy medicine, we can purchase oxygen and equipment, we can purchase breast milk, but we cannot purchase her own milk for her own baby. Mm -hmm. So we start those moms pumping right away and we get those babies to the breast just as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. And we've had real good luck with it. And it's a work in progress for those moms. And if we can get the baby there for just a little while and take a few sucks, that's the progress. That's the step one. And then we go with them step by step until they're latching their baby, their baby's drinking from their breast. And about that time, they're usually ready to go home. That's fantastic. These babies are with us, you know, several weeks or months. So, mm -hmm. so we don't rush them. Mm -hmm. We let them go at their own pace, but they leave breastfeeding. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Okay. Well, ladies, is there anything else that you wanted to cover that we weren't um, covering in our conversation? Any other points you'd like to make? Well, I'd just like to say that I have really, I've been working at Floyd for about eight years now. I was a lactation consultant when I came to Floyd, and the reason I came is because I knew that Floyd's program seemed to me, my estimation was, it's the best in the area, and I wanted to be part of it, and I have been very pleased at the way I have been able to practice my craft at Floyd, and I appreciate Floyd's commitment to breastfeeding for this community. Thank you. We appreciate your expertise and what you're doing for our tiniest patients and our new moms. Ladies, should someone want to get in touch with you for more information or for your services, how do they do that? The best way to reach us is to call our office manager, Jennifer Talley, and her phone number is 706 509 six five four eight and if you have if it's about buying Medela products renting or buying a pump or the services of lactation Jennifer can point you in the right direction that's fantastic thank you so much for your time today we appreciate you joining yes, us you. and don't forget that you can always find information about all of our services at www.floyd.org also continue to follow us on social media where you'll find helpful information news about our services, and notifications about upcoming events such as this. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and Pinterest. Just search for Floyd Medical Center. I'm Haley Walker. Thank you for joining us.